Hey guys, it's the guys, it's Donald again, and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also want to tell you that I'm going to be continuing the bridge example that we did with iOS. We're basically been creating a bridge between Unity 3D and iOS that is going to allow us to communicate back and forth. I show you the open source GitHub repository that I created for that. What I'm going to be doing today is we're going to be extending it and also adding functionality to be able to share information in iOS. It's basically going to show you the UI alert controller, which is basically going to be a little overlay that shows on the iPhones and also on the iPads. And I'm also going to be adding another feature to be able to get the battery information and level of the battery from iOS to Unity. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so I'm going to start by showing you the results of what we're going to be demoing today. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the application in my iOS device. So this has all the features that we've been working on for the last couple of videos, including the features that I'm going to be showing you today, which is going to be the last three features, a share message, the get battery status, and I also get the battery level. So let me walk you through what we have right now. So I, I can click on basic alert, get a basic alert. I can click on basic alert confirmation, get a confirmation. I could cancel if I don't want to confirm, but if I confirm, I get basically a callback and that goes back into Unity and it secures that callback in Unity. I can also rotate down if I want to rotate down and it also shows me a confirmation. It's ask, asking me, should I rotate down? I'm going to say, okay. And you can see how that is rotating in an opposite direction. I can go ahead and go back and rotate back up. And then the other three features are features that I added today. So I'm going to show you the bottom two first. So let me show you the get battery status. This is going to be an enum that I'm sending back and I'm going to show you that in the code. So currently I'm charging my phone and you can see that by looking at the indicator on the top right. And then that is basically the status that I'm getting. I'm going to feel that it uh, fixed that typo. It says battery status instead of battery status. And then the last one is going to be the level. So this shows me 60% is charged. So it should be changing as the, as my battery charges. And then I'm also using the alert, the basic alert to show those. So I'm reusing some of the components above and then adding new functionality below that is going to, that is allowing me to use multiple features at once. The other feature that I want to show you that is new is basically sharing. And this is actually sharing text in URL. So if I click on it, you can see that I get, you know, a lot of information that I can, that I can also use to share. I could share on a message. I could share via email. I could share on a reminder. Let's say that I wanted to do a message. And you can see that it has my, my YouTube link and it also has sharing a message, which is going to be the text. So if I cancel out of that, let's say that I want to add that to an email, I can click on an email and you can also see sharing a message and also the link that I'm sharing. I could also add an image, but I didn't have time to, to add an image, but I will add it in a future video. So that's some of the functionality that, that we're going to be looking in today. So what I want to show you is the next pieces in Unity. We're going to be looking at some of the components that I added to Unity and then what I have. So I'm going to start with the UI and show you some of those events. And so the first thing I show you before is how I'm binding to all of these. So these are just bounds for the most part. I added the share message button. I also added the battery status and we can actually, or the, the text that it shows is actually behind the scenes. So I'm going to show you how we can fix that typo. And then I also added the get battery level. So for the most part, this is the same as the previous videos. All I did is I added new buttons and then I basically bound those buttons to the UI binding object. So let's go ahead and focus on the code. I want to show you how some of that code works. So the, the first thing that I'm going to show you is the MM, which is the Objective-C implementation. So some of the things that I have right now that I, I show you before are the alert view. So I still have that method because we're showing a basic alert. I have the alert confirmation view. This is where we're basically giving the user an option of OK or cancel. And then I also have a share view, which is going to be the new view that you saw that I was able to share via mail. I was able to share information via text. So this is the implementation. I'll show you what that does. The other one that I implemented as well was the get battery status the get battery level and then I have some C functions that I'm exposing so we can bind it in C sharp. So let's go ahead and look at the the let's go ahead and look at the get battery status first. 
and then get battery level after and then we'll look at the share view last because that one is a little more there's more into it so this one is fairly simple the the reason why i was returning an integer is because the battery state is actually an integer and there are four states of that integer it could be zero one two and three and i'll show you what those are but that's what i'm going to get here based on the state so if i'm charging or if the state the, the state is unknown it's going to be zero or if it's completely charged it's going to return a different integer number so the first thing that i needed to do was to create, create an instance of ui device and then i get basically that instance by looking at the current device instance then i store that in a variable and then if you want to get battery information you have to call this method which is called a set is called a set battery monitoring enable i set it to yes and i basically return that number the the reason why i show you running on my device in the beginning of the video is because if you run the, this in the simulator it doesn't actually work it doesn't tell you that it's monitoring and i think it's because it's just a simulator so that's what i had to do that on the actual device to show you the real response i'll show you in the simulator how it looks it still works but it just doesn't give you the statuses that we're looking for. So this returns an integer and then the, let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna show you these from the beginning to the end. So we can see that we're returning an integer here and the method is called get battery status and it's return is actually returning an integer. The plus symbol indicates that this is a static method. And if we go into our C extern, so this means these are going to be the ones that we are exposing through C code. And you can see here that I have also an integer. And then I'm using underscore to designate what's going to be C code versus what's going to be actually C, uh, C sharp code. So in the C sharp code, actually, they, they map. So C sharp is going to have underscore as well. But what I what is different here is the iOS plugin the name the name of that method is different the reason why it's different because this is actually calling into the class the objective c class that we see right here and i explained some of that on the previous video so make sure you watch some of those videos so i'm basically calling it so this is the return time which is going to be an integer this is the method name that i'm designating that has to match what i'm going to have in c sharp and then the return it's going to be a call to the class which i have right here and then the method is going to be what I have right after, which is going to be the get battery status. It doesn't take any parameters, so that's why I have it surrounded by brackets, and it's only the method name that we need. So that's going to return an integer. Now, if we go into C, into the actual C sharp code that actually does the mappings, that's going to be on the iOS plugin. So if you notice right here, I have a couple of methods, and I showed you some of those before, but the new ones that I have right now. I added my DL import underscore underscore internal and I also have my stern which is an integer so this matches exactly what we have right here on the plugins let me just go ahead and collapse this so you can see everything and how how they work together so anything that you have under the extern C code is going to map exactly to what the method name is that has the DL import attribute so you can see those two are exactly the same and also the same type so that's how we can transfer that information over to c sharp so it's basically like a like basically a mapping of a method from c code to a method in c sharp and then that as well has basically a call to the c the objective c code which is in the body of the of the method that you see on the on the objective c implementation which basically co co calls the method that are that is above i'm losing my voice because i think i'm just i'm just talking a lot but that's how this works and then the other method that i added was the get battery level it's basically the same thing that i did here i needed to get information from the device so i'm just basically getting the instance setting the battery monitor enable to yes and then the device itself the variable has has a very uh, method called battery level so that's basically what i'm calling i'm calling battery level and then I'm multiplying that by 100 so that we can, you know, get into the percentages. And then I'm basically sending a string. And you can change this if you like to. You, you might want to send just the value. That way you can format it however you want in C Sharp. For this one, I did it that way. For this one, I didn't do it. But, you know, if you like to do that, you're more than welcome to do that. And then you can just return the, the number instead of returning a string. So in this case, because I'm returning a string, 
you can see that right here I am returning a const char with a pointer and then calling a get battery level. So this is actually going to return a char value pointer. And the way that I, I had to I had to make I have to do a lot of testing to make sure this was gonna work. So if I do this call right here, which is inside of the brackets, that's going to return an n string, which is basically the type that we're returning here. We need to convert that to a UTF a string. And by making that call, that's going to actually convert it to this type right here, which is a cons char and a pointer. But if you just do that without this this helper method, it's gonna throw it basically is gonna throw an exception saying that the basically and we're trying to make changes to and I didn't understand this really well, but we had to make a copy of it before we could send it to we could send it to Unity. So I had to do some Googling and I'm gonna be honest with you, I, I did some Googling in order for me to find out how to do that. So if you don't have this method right here, it's not gonna work. So you need to make sure that we're copying basically the char value that we're getting back and then creating a new copy. Otherwise, Unity basically can't handle it. It just throws it just throws an, an exception. So I have this method in here that anytime I'm returning a UTFA string and I'm calling that to convert it to the here, we're basically creating a copy of it and then it looks like Unity can handle it just fine. So make sure that you keep that in mind anytime you're dealing with any strings and returning, you know, a string, basically this data type. So that's what that is. These two methods are fairly, it's fairly simple. If we go back in here, we actually go into the plugin. So you can see that I have those two methods in here. This one is an integer and this one is a string. And then I also added the, basically the C sharp implementation method, which is the get battery status. And one of them is the get battery level. The this one right here, I wanted, I didn't want to return an integer. I wanted to do something more elegant. And instead of returning an integer, I created an enum. So if you look at this, this is actually returning an enum. And I like that better because I know exactly what that is instead of just having numbers. So I went into the Apple documentation and I look at all the all the possible fields that they would return for that for for those for the translation of that number. So they were returning UI device battery state unknown. And that was mapping to zero. And then if the battery state was unplugged, that was mapping to one. So I basically matched those up and created an enum. And then what I'm doing here, I'm basically casting the value that I get back from the Objective-C code and then casting that to an enum. And then basically that it's going to give us an enum back. And, and the cool thing with that is I can uh, I can do a two string on the, on the UI piece and then basically display the enum the in on description instead of just the number. So that's what that is. And then the get battery level is basically returning the string that we're getting back from the objective seeker, which is going to be this plus the percentage of the battery level. So that's what that is. Now if we go back into UI bindings, this is where the the we're basically binding the UI from from the data that we're getting from iOS. So if we go here, I added the these three new basically listeners so we're listening to the on click on these three different buttons and then i have a basically have i have a method that we're calling in as soon as we click so for the battery status i'm calling into battery status for the battery level i'm calling into that and then for sharing messages i'm calling into that so you can see that on the two one that we're reviewing right now we're basically calling the ios plugin get battery status and then this is going to return an enum. So I did it a var because I didn't want to do the fully qualified path, but that's basically an enum. And I could go in here and say, you know, battery status, and I can do comparisons because now we're dealing with enums. So I could say, you know, iOS plugin battery status. Does it equal to one of these? So that's, it's, we have a little more control when we're dealing with enums versus just an integer. And then what I'm doing here and just basically doing a to a string on that enum, and that's what we're seeing on the on the first on, on the initial demo that I gave you. We're seeing the description instead of the actual integer. And then for the battery level, I'm just basically passing that information through. And in fact, I could just change this to battery because that was the typo. And then this one as well, it's gonna be battery. Make sure that I fix I fix those two typos. So now on the share message, I did the same thing on the UIP. So we're sharing a message, we're calling into this. It's calling the share message method 
we're basically passing so there's two parameters on this one one is a message the other one is a url i i didn't want to require the url that's why you see equal and then quotes and quotes that means that it's an optional value which means that i could have done this if i wanted to i could not just specify that and then basically what would happen is we would just share the subject the message and not the url so i made it optional just in case you wanted to do that and then at some point i'm going to add an image so you can pass in an image as well for now let's just keep it just keep it simple and then everything else in here looks the same i just added you know those three buttons so that we can bind them to the on click events and then call the methods that i show you right below so that's everything on the ui bindings that i added for this plugin and then the other thing that i wanted to show you let me go back into the the actual the actual ios plugin so i can show you that piece and so i show you here that we have these two new two new methods and they map exactly to the method names that were we have an external on c in the objective c code and then this one as well this one is a new one that i added and it basically matches what we have in the c code so i have the message and i have the url this one is not optional because i want that to match exactly what we have in objective c however the one that we have in c sharp because this is the one that is mapping to objective c but the one that we're calling within the plugin is going to be the one that is right underneath which is going to be this one doesn't have the underscore so this is the one that we're going to call within unity and that's why i made that optional so if we don't specify we're just going to pass in an empty an empty url and then if we do a specify it'll have a url and then we're also taking the message then calling the one that underscore share message we goes into the c code and then calls the appropriate method that we have in objective c so that's that piece let's go back into the objective c implementation and i can show you the rest so this basically matches all these three match exactly what we have in c sharp so in fact we can probably just pull it back on again just so that you know so you can look at it again and then you can see that we have share message which is this one right here with a message and this type is going to be the c type and then the type right here is going to be the c sharp type just keep that in mind and then these two are returning one of them is returning an integer so i have an integer and this one is returning a string so i have a const char with a pointer and then this one is translating to a string so that seems to work just fine and then i show you that if we were returning a string we have to do a copy of that type otherwise we get an exception and then lastly is the share view which is going to actually be called from the share message so if we go down here and we look at the share message i can now close the ios plugin you can see that i'm passing i'm basically calling my static class which is the ios plugin i'm calling into share view i'm passing in the message so i'm converting that to an in a string by taking this type and then passing it to the string with utfa string just like we did this too and then i'm also adding a url and i'm taking it as a string but then i'm converting it to an s url and i'll show you that in in the code above so we're calling that method in objective c now if we go here and we look at the implementation we're taking a message and we're taking also a url so the first thing that i do here is even if this is an empty url it's going to create a url with an empty basically it's going to be an empty url so that should still work and then for the message we're going to be basically passing in just the message straight up in here of course if we wanted to do some validation you could do some validation as well maybe in unity before you before you do that but at this point we're just going to take what we're getting and then we're passing it we're basically passing it to an s array of the items that we're going to be posting and sharing so that's why you can see an array here which is going to be the message comma the post url and then we're creating a ui activity view controller basically our variable here we're allocating it and then initializing it with activity items which is going to be the ns array that we have and then we don't have any application activity so that's nil and this is so that it works with the iphone and also ipad and i'm going to show you how that works in the simulator for both for the iphone and also for ipad so that's why i'm using uh, basically the ui user interface idiom this is what allows us to check whether it's going to be an iphone or an ipad so the first thing that we do here is we check to see okay if, it's, if it is an iphone 
then we basically present the view controller we set animated to yes and then we don't have any callback on completion because I don't think we need it right now and if you wanted to add it we could get a callback as well just like we did on you know some of these confirmations so for now I just have a nil and then but if it's an iPad I have to do something different because the iPad has to have a popover for anything that you want to share so I create a UI popover presentation controller with a variable and let me actually change this it's actually I like it when it when it's consistent so that it's like that so then we create a popover variable we grab the controller which you can see here and then we get the popover presentation controller from that UI activity view controller and then we assign the popover source view to be a controller view and then basically what happens is this is going to show a popover on the iPad versus you know showing just what what's a normal presentation view controller on a on an iPhone so that's how this works and I know it's a lot but it's there's a lot of documentation out there if you have questions about this and the next thing that I want to show you is I want to show you how it looks in the simulator so I'm going to go ahead and pull my Xcode and I'm using the Xcode beta because I'm always using the latest version of the betas because I'm doing a lot of testing with uh, new technologies but you can use you know the current version the official version as well so let me show you the latest build and I'm going to show you how this works on the iPad so what I need to do actually I, I built this for the device so we're not going to be able to select the the simulator so what I got to do is I go into unity and I'm going to show you how you can build this so you can test it in the simulator as well let's wait until everything recompiles I'm going to go into build settings player settings so there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind so if you're building to the simulator you need to change the one of the settings in here that is going to allow us to do that which is going to be the target SDK so we need to do we need to use the simulator SDK and if you're building to the phone you need to use the device SDK just keep that in mind otherwise it's not going to work so now that we have that selected it's going to save and then close I'm going to go to file and then I'm going to go here and just do a build and I'm going to just replace what we have already because I already have it in my phone I'm just going to do a pen and then replace and it's just going to replace the current bill that I created previously and then this is going to take just few probably a few seconds and I'll continue the video as soon as this is completed all right guys so it looks at like this finished building so let me go ahead and pull it up and I'm actually going to pull it up in the beta and let me okay so now you can see that we have the simulators available because we selected the the actual the actual simulator SDK so what I want to show you here let's go ahead and run it on the iPad Pro just to give you kind of give you a demo on that piece and let's just hit play so it's gonna to try to build it and then it should launch the simulator as well so I want to show you how it looks on the iPad Pro and also how it would look on the regular device it looks like we get few errors let me see why that is and unity metal support it's included let me make sure let me make sure that I did everything here correctly because I know that oh, it looks like it's fine and simulator SDK let me try the non beta and if that doesn't work then we can find out why this is not working go ahead and pull it up and then I'm just gonna close the beta version because I think I didn't I didn't use the beta version when I was trying on the simulator okay so let's go ahead and do the iPad Pro 11 inches and then hit play and see if that still gives us errors if it still give us errors we'll we'll go ahead and look into it if not great we can look at how it works all right and there's a lot of tasks to be built and when you when you're looking at warnings just to kind of give you more information just don't worry about warnings because a lot of times unity has it'll give you a lot of warnings in unity and this is normal but you know if you if you start fixing things i would recommend that you look you're you're careful about doing that otherwise you might have issues with your unity build okay so it looks like everything worked here and we're launching now on the simulator so it looks like yeah with the Xcode beta the simulator piece doesn't work so make sure that you use the regular version of Xcode and now this is launching 
and we should it should start here in a second there we go so now now it should be good so now i can click on you know basic alert i can click on the basic alert confirmation that works i can get my call back and you know this piece is also working if i do i change the the rotation direction if i click on my battery so this is the other thing that i wanted to show you it's unknown because we're we are in a simulator and also the battery level the reason why it's negative 100 is because we get a, ne a negative one if the battery monitoring doesn't start and this makes sense because we're multiplying it by 100 and also the battery monitoring doesn't start on the simulator so this is okay and then the next thing that i wanted to show you was the share message so if we click on share message you can see that we're getting a little popover and i can also you know select whether i want to just copy it or i want to add a reminder and i show you in the beginning of the video that we get more options is because i have more apps in my actual device but if you wanted to test this you could also just you know if you wanted just to copy it you can copy it go out and then go into create a text message it's going to show you a couple of things and we can select some of these mock-up mock -up people and then i can basically paste and you can see that the sharing message is working let's go ahead and go into the the iphone so i'm going to use let's go ahead and do the let's do the x excess is fine and then hit play and it's going to rebuild the project and then run it on that other simulator so i'm going to go ahead and move the simulator here move this one here we can i'm going to go back into our app so we can show both and perfect let me go ahead and move this down just a tiny bit maybe there we go so we have it aligned so this one is working this one is working i can click on you know my alerts you saw that i was working in here as well i can go in and click on get battery status that also works and i can click on share message which is a different ui interface than the one that we're seeing in here and that's what i have to i had to check in objective c whether it was an iphone or an ipad but this should also work i can click on add a reminder if i wanted to add a reminder with the message you can see that it has the sharing message and it also has the youtube url embedded once i go into reminders you'll be able to see it so looks like everything is working and that's basically everything that i wanted to show you and then the last thing that i want to show you before we wrap it up is show you that i checked in i check in this into source control so if you go to github and then delmar v and then unity let's see i think it's called unity bridge yep it is called unity ios bridge essentials and if i go back into view actual size you're gonna see that i have a few examples in here that i've been adding to the documentation if you want to do a basic alert if you want to do uh, basically an alert with a callback this gives you a demo and let me go back looks like i hit back by mistake if you want to share a message with a url this is how you actually do it through code and then if you want to get battery status this is how you do it these are the different possible values that you might get and also if you want to and this is looks like this is wrong this is, should be the battery level i'll fix that as well looks like we have a typo so in fact i can probably just fix it right here just by editing this and then this is going to be get battery level and let me go ahead and if i save it for later i won't remember so and then get battery level get battery status it looks like everything is is well documented and i also have a demo showing some of the previous features i'll update this gif as well so that's everything that i wanted to show you guys thank you all right guys thank you much for watching this video today i really appreciate your time and again if you have any questions please let me know also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers they had a great forums also great resources that are easy to follow so make sure that you check them out and also find me in patreon.com where i'm posting information about what i'm doing in my office behind the scenes i'm also posting early access source code and then basically everything that i'm doing on a daily basis so thank you very much guys